Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Oh, I so love the word of God. You see, it gives you light. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to guide us into all truth. So, so when you have the Holy Spirit and you depend on him, you can actually look into the future and you will see truth. Now, that's what I've been sharing with you. <laughs> Remember, we, we are talking about opening of the book. The opening of the book. Now, I began to share with you from Monday, from last week, actually, the prophecies of Joel and how that is going to come to pass literally in our days. Now, this is the heart of God. This is what God intends. And he surely will do it. So I began to show you the connection between the promise that God made with Abraham and us today and the fulfillment of it. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Make it be bold. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It is coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is, this is, this is just... Be so the more I think about this, the more I, I feel excited in my spirit. Because, see, over the years, the Lord had been teaching me this thing, but then I've noticed it's been precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line being upon line. That's how it's been. So the more I think I know it, the more the Lord opens it up and I realize, whoa, this is so real. <laughs> I'm telling you, for many years now, the Lord has been talking to me about this. And the more he talks, the more I see with clear understanding what he's referring to. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed Lord Jesus. You are so good. <laughs> he's so good. There is no unrighteousness in God. None. Look for it, you will not find. I give you 10,000 years to find. You will not find one unrighteousness with him. It is men that have become unrighteous, not following his path and his ways. Praise God. All right, then. So I was telling you yesterday. I, 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 so let me see how I can conclude on this today. Praise God. So I was telling you yesterday the reason. God instituted the tithes and no many people came up and said, oh, you're not supposed to tithe. I told you something. Now, like I told you earlier, when the Lord says something, you may not even understand it at the beginning, but the more you patiently follow him, the more you realize what he's saying. The Lord said this to me a few years ago, maybe like two years ago. Yeah, I think about two years ago. The Lord said to me, he said, son, Anyone who is against tithing and preaches that people should not tithe, he says, that person has entered and is functioning by the spirit of the Antichrist. I'll say it again. I'll say it again. Now, I didn't say they are wicked. I didn't say they themselves, they are evil. I didn't say they are the Antichrist. I, I need you to understand what I'm saying. I'm saying that person who comes up boldly to say, you are not supposed to tithe. Titan is, is of the Old Testament. Titan is gone out. I said they are operating by the spirit of the Antichrist. I'm saying this to help them, not saying this to condemn them. That thought, that teaching that idea didn't come to you from the spirit of god it came from the spirit of the antichrist why am i saying so now like i said when the lord told me this it was just a statement like ah oh, lord this is harsh but the more i follow the lord 
I said this was about two years ago. The more I followed her, the more I began to understand what he meant. The reason is because tithing is one vital part of the ministry of Christ in our lives and on the earth. Titan is one very, very... Now, Titan is directly connected to the end time. So, anyone who tries to stop it or who tries to turn your mind away from it is simply doing something. It's pushing us away from the fulfillment of the prophecy of God in Christ Jesus. Now, when someone is pushing you away from the fulfillment of God's prophecy in Christ Jesus, what do you think? That person is operating as an anti-Christ. So this, I'm not condemning. I'm just telling you this thing you're doing, you better repent from it. Go back to the Lord and let him talk to you. I'm not just putting up an idea. I'm putting up things that I'm showing you scriptures and uh, connecting the dots. Now, of course, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you want to argue uh, with, with, with just intellect alone, you will be wrong. We are intelligent, yes. But what do we do with our brains? What do we do with our intelligence? We connect it with the Spirit of God and He begins to teach us as He's teaching us by our intelligence. We pick what He's saying. We connect the dots because He's told us some things before. I get what I'm saying. Now that's what you do with your intellect. Analyze His Word. Then it's beginning to make sense. Then you are convinced. Then you make your decisions. So you see, Titan is so important to the end time. How? And that's what I've been explaining to you. So there is a promise God made to Abraham. Through your seed, I'm going to bless all the families. Now take note, all the families of the earth. All the families of, yes, all the families. He didn't say all the families of Israel. No, he said all the families of the earth. Now, do you know this was, I know, bro, the fila as kilabahanda. Do you know this was the, this was the main reason the church in Jerusalem began to suffer persecution. What was the reason? Go read your Bible. In the early church, after they received the Holy Ghost, they began to prosper now the the, the 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 brethren the bible said it got to a stage in their lives that nobody had need of anything it says they all had things in common and nobody lacked now that looked like okay god had spoken about this thing everybody will be blessed but that was not exactly what god said now that's the problem sometimes God says something, we see a little part, we jump to conclusion, God's word has been, no, examine his word. His word says all the families of the earth. He didn't say all the families of my children. He didn't say all the families of Israel, all the families of the earth. So they were in Jerusalem and joined this blessing. You understand? And join this blessing and happy with what God was doing in their life. Nobody lacked. Wow, Joel had spoken of these days that my people shall not be ashamed. When he says, my people shall not be ashamed, he was speaking about my people shall not be ashamed. No, my people will not beg. That's actually what he was saying. My people shall not beg. Now, so it looked like, wow, Joel's prophecy has been fulfilled. But God says, no, 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 no. I said, all the families of the earth. Okay. Satan stepped in and God allowed it. Scattered the church. Everybody began to run in different direction. They began to run to Gentile nations. They began to move everywhere because of the persecution. Do you think God couldn't have silenced the enemy? Oh, you read in scripture, read the book of Acts. They will arrest them, put them in prison. An angel will show up and bring them out. They saw deliverance, mighty deliverance. They saw the hand of God with them. Then why did God suddenly allow persecution? So much so that they scattered to different parts of the world. Some went to as far as India. 
You know the story. Read these things. Why? Because God have said all the families of the earth. So as far as they go, they are extending the frontiers of the blessing. When we talk about the gospel, this is the purpose of the gospel. The purpose of the gospel is to bring the blessing of God to all the families of the earth. So listen, if your gospel, if the gospel we preach have not resulted to that place where people I know, I'm begin to feel the physical impact of the love of God in their lives, then we have not preached the gospel yet. If our gospel is only come to Jesus, come and get saved. Then they come to Jesus and they come, now you will not go to hell again. Stay like this, stay like this, don't sin again so that you will not go to hell. Brothers and sisters, there is a reason he commands us not to sin. The reason he commands us not to sin is because he is there as the strong and breasted one and he is ready to take care of you. He is ready to take care of, of everything that you need. Deal with him. That's the call. Deal with me. Whatever you want, ask me. I'll give it to you. Now, when everybody begins to turn to the Lord like that, Lord, I, I need some money. Oh, I'll give it to you. And then the Lord gives to them. Don't you see that sin will reduce? The cause of sin in this world, number one, pride, selfishness. And then the, the quest to have. Why will people tell lies? Why will people cheat? Why will people steal? The quest to have. And that leads to every other thing. So when they struggle, they have, they become proud. And they keep. That's man for you. But that's not what God designed. God wants everybody to relax and know that he can take responsibility to, for all. That is the love of God. Think about it. For God so loved the world that he took responsibility for her salvation by giving. He was the one that gave. If he had to create a son to give his blood for all men, what is food, what is money that he cannot give to you? Now here is what happens. Here is how it operates. And I want you to listen closely. So God has already instituted the titan to Abraham and to the children of Israel. To drive home this point, you remember Jesus when he went into Jerusalem. He sent his disciples, go over to the city, to a certain street. You will see a, a cot that is tied, which no man has ever really known. He said, losing it. And if any man asks you, tell them the Lord have need of it and they will let it go. So they went there. They saw this ass tied. They loosened it. And some people were there. So it's not like the ass just found its way there. Some people were watching over it. But he didn't say go ask anybody for it. He said losing it. If anybody asks you, tell them the Lord has need of it. And that's because Moses had instructed the Jews. It was a common practice in, in the Jewish nation that the third year, they bring out their tithes and they keep it at their gates. So now that's what that fellow was doing. So all Jesus did was, Lord, how am I going into Jerusalem? God said, okay, I'll, I'll provide the vehicle for you to use. So where is it? It's tied over there. And he had got somebody that has brought out his tithes to keep there. Now you get it. Praise God. So now, so you see, Jesus became a beneficiary of the tithes. He didn't have to take what belongs to somebody. No, it was what was kept for. That's why he says, tell them the Lord. He didn't say, tell them Jesus. Have need. He said, tell them the Lord. So when they hear the Lord, they, they just assume these people must be connected to the temple. Now, if someone had gone there and losing that thing and say, oh, I'm a widow. I need this to feed or I need this to sort out my family. They would have let it go. If one had come and say, oh, I'm an orphan. I saw this donkey. Please, I need it. I need it to take care of. They would have let it go. If that's the purpose, it was kept there. See that now? Now, Jesus wasn't an orphan. Jesus wasn't a widow, a widower. Jesus wasn't a stranger. So he used the one that is connected to the Levites. So the Lord has need of it. So they just feel oh, they are taking this thing to the temple. Okay. All right then. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. So today... Today, 
we that are the seed of Abraham, we have received the Holy Spirit. Haven't received the Holy Spirit because they say if you are Christ, you can't be Christ if you have not received the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus said the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide us into all truth. Now, this is one important ministry of the Holy Ghost in your life, guiding you into all truth. So your life is supposed to be going from truth to truth, truth to truth, truth to truth. So now the Holy Spirit is in us. We don't need to follow the law that Moses gave to the children of Israel. But there is one thing that will be happening to you if you are truly functioning by the Holy Spirit. You are going to find yourself carrying, carrying out certain operations that you will look at the law and say, Oh, oh, this is what they were doing. Oh, this is what Moses meant. Yes, that's what it means to fulfill the law. Remember, it says Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Now, Christ is in us. So when we get blessed, we do the same thing God has commanded them from the days of Abraham. When we get blessed, we take out God's portion, which is the tithe. As we take it out, we take it to the owner. Now, this is the important part. We take it to the owner and say, Lord, you have blessed me. And now here is your portion. Holy Spirit, can you direct me to where this should be employed, where this should be used? Now, it is him that will now connect you to become a blessing to all the families of the earth. Everywhere you have a child of God on the face of the earth, when we receive substance, because now I want you to understand something. You remember, mm, you re remember the widow of Zarephath. That woman was almost starving. What did God do? He sent Elijah to her house. So Elijah moved from the brook to her house. And then something began to happen. Elijah said, make, make for me first. He says, well, thus saith the Lord. See, he, he prophesied to her. And exactly what he said, they never lacked bread one day. Guess what? Because Elijah was there. You as a seed of Abraham, wherever you find yourself, you are a testimony that God is in that place. And because of you, I everybody in that environment must be taken care of. So you must begin to increase your faith, not only for your think of just you. And hey, let me tell you this. I, I, I know preachers who say, eh, it doesn't have to be the tithe. Listen, listen, just follow God's plan. Follow, don't add your own. Follow God's plan first. I'm telling you, God made a plan since how to fulfill his word. So even if you now want to be selfish, it doesn't concern him. His plan is perfect. He has got 10%. That's why Malachi said, if you don't pay it, you are robbing him. It's not a free will gift. It's an institution God has set up for all his children. 10% of what you have, what you get, belongs to the Lord. If you don't give it, you are stealing it. You are stealing it. Why? That was the plan that God put in place to see to it that all the families of the earth. So today, by the Spirit of God, as we connect with Him, every child of God must learn this, how to connect with the Holy Spirit, especially in this business. You ask Him, Lord, what would you have me do with this? And he tells you, give it to that family. Give it to that church. Give it to this person. Give it to that your colleague. Give it to... And when you give, you tell them, this is the Lord's command that I should give this to you. I was praying and the Lord spoke to me that I should send this over to you. I was praying and God said I should bring this to you. You must tell them the source. 
Now, you don't have to go explain, oh, this is my title, eh, but God said I should give it. No, 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 no. You are tithing to the Lord. When the Lord now commands you to give it to them, you're not giving them tithe. You are giving them their father's money. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're giving it. It's like you do business with me. And then we split the profit. And you, you're the one with the money. And I said, okay, split the profit. Okay, I've split it. So I have this for you. I have this for me. Then I said, okay, take um, this amount from my profit and give it to my, 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 my cousin that lives near you. Please give it to him. You go to him and say, this is the profit of the business, me and my brother. No, you just say, oh, um, your cousin says I should give you this money. That's what you would do. It's the same thing we do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray the wisdom of God will fill the earth. The world is suffering because of the church's ignorance. The world is suffering because of the church's disobedience. But that is changing in our day. And that's why God is sending his word now. Take his word, act on it, and bless the world. Praise God. Oh, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Your word shall be fulfilled before our eyes. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.